What's going on everybody, it's 4KE and today I'm giving you guys the top five cameras for beginners because a lot of people always ask me like, hey, I'm looking to get in photography or videography, what, company, what type of camera should I use? Like, I wanna look for something, but you know, usually they're on a budget, so these are kind of budget friendly and also just some good quality cameras that I've done some research on to actually just know like, okay, this is gonna be pretty good for you. Before I give you the list actually, you need to know like, what do you need the camera for and other things but we'll get into that in the video all right so i wrote some notes down and these are a few things that you need to think about before you actually invest into a camera so the things i have written down is quality you know does it shoot 4k is it 720 i hope it's not 720 because honestly we're in a, a new age you shouldn't be shooting 720 but is it 4k is it just 1080 like you need to know these things about the camera the frame rate does it have 120 frames per second which equals slow motion does that 60 frames per second which is also slow motion but it's really not that you know good of slow motion our the first camera that i got which is a sony a 5000 did not have 120 frames per second it only had 60 frames per second and it wasn't a struggle but when we switched to the a6300 and we had the slow motion it was just at 120 frames per second it was just amazing it was just like oh no this is real slow motion so th that's something you need to think about the look of the camera like Sony's have a different look than Canon's. Canon's have a different look than Nikon's. Nikon's have a different looks from Lumix and so forth and so forth. So you gotta understand like, what's the look that you wanna give off? What are you shooting? So are you shooting sports? Are you just doing photography? Are you looking to do videography? You know, you gotta figure out these things before you can actually figure out what type of camera you wanna get. How good is the battery life? Cause this, believe it or not, is a very good question that I think you should know before you actually buy a camera. Cause we didn't look into that and we ended up with Sony and Sony batteries are don't kill me now Sony batteries are actually pretty bad they're pretty terrible if you've used any of the early Sony alpha lines and you know that they're really not that good yeah quite quite terrible it's like we have like seven honestly because that's how many we need but our Canon friends are over here with two and halfway through the shoot they're like I'm still on two bars and I'm on 10% on my second battery so that's just something that you need to know and lastly, the, another important thing to know is does it have a microphone output? Because believe it or not, not all cameras have a microphone output and I think it's very essential because the audio is, is really 80% of your video. All right, so the top five cameras that I can recommend to any beginners who wanna get in photography or videography. Um, for number five, I'm gonna go with my camera, the Sony A6300. Um, it's a great camera, honestly. 4K quality, 1080p at 120 frames per second, 4K 24 frames per second. So 24 is what we naturally see. That's gonna be for anybody who wants to get in vlogging or anything like that. Um, you won't have any slow motion in 4K, but honestly, I don't think you really need it because if you don't have a really good computer that can process that, then you're gonna take forever editing. So 4K at 24 frames per second, 1080p at 120 frames per second, which is slow motion. Um, you do have a microphone input right here. Boom, it's amazing, I promise you. Um, you get a better grip. I had an A5000 before and it was honestly just like so small in my hand. This is really good for photos and videography. I really recommend Sony for videography. It does have a little pull out screen like this. My A5000 actually had a flip up screen, which is really cool. And I recommend this for anybody who really just is not really a vlogger, but you really want to get into videography. You can get a Sony A6300 for about $700 brand new, or you can look online and probably find one for about $550. It's, it's pretty good, honestly, price wise. Uh, if you, you know, do a couple shoots or you just save some money up, it won't be that hard to kind of get there, but you know, with some work, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can figure out how to make it work. Especially if you college students, you college students, do a refund check. Don't blow that refund check on clothes. Get your camera. This camera will make you more money, I promise. I promise. Coming in at number four, we got the Canon M50. And the Canon M50 is a smooth little camera, honestly, in my opinion. Um, it does have 4K quality at 24 frames per second. You do get the 1080p in slow motion. And you also, you know, brings the swivel screen, which is honestly the best bang for your buck if you're gonna be a vlogger or anything like that. With the YouTube age that we're currently in, a lot of people do like to vlog, so I would recommend the swivel screen right here. Um, Canon is really good color science when it comes to just photography so if you want to take photos but you also want to vlog a little bit i do recommend the canon m50 the price point at it is going to be 599 dollars for the body 
and the lens or you can get it for about 575 just for the body that's a smooth little camera in my opinion like i said you really can't beat the, the swivel out screen the 4k quality it just released in 2018 so it's a fairly new camera and a lot of youtubers actually recommend this camera as a you know beginning camera because of just how simple it is to use and the capabilities of this camera Coming in at number three is gonna be the Sony a6400 and the difference between the a6400 and my 6300 is actually a lot. The 6400 has the flip up screen with it just like I had on my first camera. So they brought it back for the 6400 which is really good for vlogging but when it flips up like right here it gets in way of the microphone so you're gonna have to find an attachment that puts the microphone on the side if you're gonna vlog with the Canon M50 like I said you really don't have the problem because the flip out screen comes on the side right here I do like the 6400 it's smaller and you know I can easily fit this in my pocket I'm not gonna hold you and even if you have like a lot of people wear fanny packs or like chest bags I put my camera in my chest bag before and just gone about my day um, and so it's very convenient with Sony's which is why I recommend Sony's a lot because it's so much bang for your buck. The A6400 has 4K, it has your 1080p. It has a better quality because it's newer. It has better science behind it. All of the specs and little things like that that you guys technically don't really under, understand right now, but that's okay. But all you need to know is it has 4K, has 1080p for slow motion, has a flip up screen, and it's very, very travel friendly. Price point on the A6400 is gonna be about $899 for just the body and $1,000 for the body and the lens. So that's coming from Best Buy. You might be able to find that somewhere else um, for a cheaper price. So yeah, you do have to invest in yourself. So this is what we're trying to do. I'm trying to keep it under $1,500 reasonably. Uh, we have bought our first camera for a deal, $350 or something like that, and Best Buy uh, open box deal. And then our second camera came from a friend, RJ Visual, shout out to you. We got it off of him for $275, but it was just a body only. But yes, it's coming in at number three is the Sony A6400. Coming in at number two, not four, that's two. Boom, boom, you feel me? We got the Canon T7i. The Canon T7i is a actually surprising camera. This camera, this camera is honestly, it's kind of fire. I'm not gonna hold you. Cause the first time I used it was in class and I was like, oh, this about to make me switch to Canon. I was like, nah, I can't do that. You know, cause I'm Sony gang for life. I'm a Sony chef. That's how I live it. That's how I cook it up. You know what I'm saying? Nonetheless, this camera is great. It has a swivel touch screen display that you can use. And the touch screen is very, very useful. I can honestly say because I don't have one. So when I use a camera with touch screen, I love it. Cause it's just like, do, 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 do. And you just get to where you need to go. And it does not have 4k, but is that really a factor right now? Let's be for real. It's really, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. It has Wi-Fi connection and Bluetooth. And I forgot to mention that with any of the other cameras, but the Sony A6400 and the A6300 does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So if you're on set and you know you just took some pictures of somebody or you're just out and you took some pictures of somebody and they're like, hey, how can I get those? You can be like, hey, I can actually send them to you right now. Just let me send them to my phone. I think it's very useful because I do it all the time and people are actually very surprised, especially if you have Adobe Lightroom on your phone and you can just edit it real quick. They're like, Wow, I just got a free photo and it's edited just like this within five minutes. And it's also a way you can make some money. So you gotta think smarter. The price point for the T7i is a pretty smooth price. I will guarantee that. You can get it for $499 just a body or you can get it for $500, $550. Walmart does have a deal for like the creative kit where you can get it for $500. Just do some research and search it up. But this is a really good deal for people who want to start off beginning Canon is really good in photography like I said the colors are great um, the autofocus is great you know it's gonna be smooth you get the touch screen swivel screen touch screen swivel screen you get what I'm saying you get the touch screen swivel display and I think that's very great for vlogging and certain things of that nature so the Canon C7i is coming in at number two I mean in at number one no, I'm just kidding. Coming in at number one is going to be your handy dandy iPhone. Okay, I know not everybody has the new iPhone 11 Pro Plus like I do. Um, I, had to, I had to step up from the 7. I'm not going to lie. I really did. Your iPhone honestly has really great quality. I will not lie about that, especially if it's the iPhone 11 Pro Max like I have. I'm going to be honest. 
my phone camera might be better than my actual camera that I actually use. My phone shoots 4K in 60 frames per second. 4K, slow-mo, like. Why don't I just do shoots on my phone? Like I just be out there, you know, but you get different things. It's actually stabilized cameras in these two. So that's another thing, but your iPhone is very great. Especially if you just want to vlog. Like a lot of people come to me and they're like, I want to do vlog stuff or I just want to start. I'm like, use your phone. You pay for it for a reason that has really great quality. All you have to do is make sure you edit it quite nice or, you know, buy some apps. It's like a $10 app, like Filmic Pro. That's what we use use for our first YouTube video and believe it or not you can get very great quality off your phone you just have to kind of color it right you just have to make sure you're shooting it right I think it'll be great off like just record yourself get you a selfie stick or even one of these you can actually get yourself a Joby Gorilla Pod something like this um, and it comes with the iPhone clamp, but it also comes with one for your camera. So that's what I find very neat. Uh, you can just take this out, you know what I'm saying? Point it to yourself, hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Blog like this. This is smooth, like I said, great camera on here. So I wouldn't, I would recommend using this, honestly. Um, or you can use it for your camera. Doesn't matter, bang for your buck. It's whatever, but that's not important. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know what's important is that you can use your iPhone when you just need to. You know, we have a whole bunch of technology out there. You can get a microphone for your iPhone that you can just plug onto your phone and now you have good audio and you got good camera quality. And if you wanna do YouTube videos like inside your house like this or anything like that, get your little tripod with a uh, iPhone clip on it and you can use it just like that. So it's plenty of opportunities that you can do to save money with your iPhone and it's the best quality. And the main important thing is that you just start. A lot of people wait because they feel like they don't have the right equipment, but just start with something and you'll never know where it, it will really end you up, honestly. Boom, so that is the top five cameras in my opinion. I already gave you the rundown of what you need to check beforehand before you actually buy one of these cameras, but top five, not in any specific order. We have the Sony a6300, boom. You got the Canon M50. You got the Sony A6400. You have the Canon T7i. And then you have your iPhone. As long as it's not an iPhone 7. Sorry, sorry, all right, I'm done playing an iPhone 7. But man, it just, we're behind. It's way ahead, you know, we're way ahead of time right now. But those are the top five right now. The honorable mention is a Lumix GH5. Really great. I've seen some guys on YouTube make movie-like quality with that camera. So I will mention this Lumix GH5. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything you're, you know, needing some help on, you can comment below and I'll try to help you out. I'm trying to do these helpful videos on my channel or my, my Instagram more so because, you know, a lot of people ask me questions and I, I want to give back. I want to have another reason to create and this is, this is what it's all about. So feel free to hit me up. Other than that, OKE out.